Hi everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning October 7th, 2019. So if you're new here, hi, welcome. I'm gonna start with an auto write, which I've done ahead of time. I'm gonna read it, explain it, and then we'll move on to Oracle cards. Okay, so let's get started. First I asked, uh, what messages would you like all of us to know at this time? So very <laughs> standard question. And they responded with, uh, if I can read it, <laughs> if you guys know anything about auto writing, auto writing can get a little complicated when you try to go back and reread it. You know what I mean? All right. The structure of the universe will be complicated for you all. I think what they meant was will be co complicated for you all to understand. All right. So they're opening this whole idea up that, they, that we're actually pursuing a deeper understanding of our universe, which is a wonderful thing. <laughs> I think it's going to be very, very freeing. It'll help us. I'm even feeling right now it'll help us escape our ego a little bit more. Um, I should, maybe I shouldn't put it that way. We're not trying to escape it necessarily, but just having that deeper understanding that that's not the only room we have to live in. <laughs> All right? We have lots of other space to move around in. Um, but this understanding will unfold and you will see that you have only known a micro bit of the whole. You have plunged deep into your ego pursuits. They talk about that a lot, right? <laughs> They've been priming us for this. The blame, the resentment, the entitlement. You have gone deep into belief that if you are good, then only good will happen. And so you will fall in energy perhaps through a tantrum if you do not receive what you wish. Okay, so this is that feeling. I'll give an example here. It's the feeling of somebody going, I do everything right. For some of you who are religious, I go to church every Sunday. Why is this happening to me? I'm a good person, right? <laughs> and they're trying to get us to start waking up and moving towards a deeper understanding of how our energy is, what we're comprised of, um, yeah, and just understanding that that old way of looking at it, that if you're good, then good things will happen. And what they're talking about, when you don't feel good, you start to fall. You start to think that, oh, I deserve these bad things happening to me. When in actuality, there's there's some other kind of creative force that's, that's sort of, I'm seeing gears coming together, that's functioning uh, just outside of a lot of our mainstream understanding. So this week is going to be a time where you're not going to, we got to quit looking for the proof of everything. As a reader, that gets annoying. I'm just going to be very honest with you. <laughs> the prove it, prove it, prove it thing. Um, this is more of, I'm going to relax into knowing that I don't know everything. How freeing will that be if you can get your ego to be quiet for a minute, right? <laughs> Which is hard for us humans, but we can kind of ease into that peace and uh, let go of self-blame. Uh, thinking that I got that when I was having uh, a bad time with my neighbors. If you've watched me for a while, you know that I had someone who was threatening me. I mean, it was a bad situation. And I would have viewers write to me and say, you got that neighbor because you're doing bad things. And so you need to look at what part of your life where you're being a bad person because obviously you're negative or you wouldn't have attracted someone like that. This is what they're talking about. They're saying that's not how it works, right? <laughs> so they didn't really reveal how it works exactly because I don't think it's the time for that. There are people who understand it and they're out there sharing that information, but a lot of us still ignore it. We're still in that place of ignoring. So let this be a week where you're just starting to understand that just because bad things are happening sometimes, it doesn't make you bad, all right? And if you see yourself as good, doesn't mean you get out of learning lessons. <laughs> or that's how we're seeing it right now. Again, I think there's going to be more expansive understanding and we're going to start seeing it. it's not necessarily a lesson, but there's some other wisdom behind some of these things happening. Okay. Um, but none of these pursuits hold true value. So they're talking about us going after our definition of success. How much money we have? What do we own? You know, I, I've literally met people who really thought that they made it in life because they had, um, I'm thinking of this one person, because he had a hot wife, uh, he had a, <laughs> a big house, fancy cars, a lot of money. I think he owned a boat. It's not a boat. It's probably a yacht, whatever. But he really thought he was rolling in life. And when I got around him, you know, being sensitive, I was like, you're one of the saddest people I've ever met in my life. Like, ooh. 
you know? So I think that's kind of what they're getting at here. Try to just, just you don't have to like bro- break open all the mysteries of the universe this week. Let's try that next week, okay? <laughs> Let's see how well that goes. Um, but take it easy on yourselves and take it easy. Lay down the judgment of other people. If people aren't doing what you think they should be doing, <laughs> let it go. Because at the end of the day, it's none of your business, right? And everybody has their soul contract to fulfill, which is what they're going to talk about here. So let me reread that last paragraph. Um, but none of these pursuits hold true value. And this is what we bring you. A revelation in the importance of the soul journey, the fulfillment of your contract, not necessarily your surface desires, right? With love, your angelic collective and God's grace. So yeah, we need to like click out of (laughs) this old way of thinking, this old way of even approaching our lives, our spirituality. If you don't believe the way I do, then you're my enemy. Um, As I said, you know how you define success, Uh, the need for a love partner to make you feel validated because you can't show up anywhere on your own. You know, I mean, like these are all the things that they're trying to click us out of a little bit. And it's not like if you're in those places, it's not that you're bad. It's just, you know, there's a new way coming out. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. I can't give that to you. I wish I could. There's that. All right. So this week I'm going to be using three Oracle decks. I'm using the Magdalene Oracle by Tony Carmine Solaire. Now I'm using this Archangel Gabriel deck, Doreen Virtue. And of course you guys know the color deck, but before we go further, couple of things. If you like what you're seeing, if you are uplifted by it, or you want to learn some more, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you are alerted every time I post something. And speaking of which, I am now using, or trying to remember to use, (laughs) the uh, premiere feature that YouTube has now come out with. So what that means is I'll set the premiere and I will, when it goes off, I will be there interacting with you guys. Okay. So you can chat with one another as you're watching the video. I think at least my exposure to it as soon as the premiere is done, it stops the chat. It doesn't stop the comments, but it stops the chat. So get your questions in <laughs> before the video is over. Of course, after the premiere, you can watch the video as many times as you like, right? Now, if you really want to go in depth with your personal, whatever you're dealing with, okay, you can go to my website at angelsouls444.com and get a personal reading. I'm also getting teachable up and running my angel souls academy so if you have not gone over there and checked it out yet please do so of course i still have courses over at gumroad and just one final thing before we get onto the cards i want to send a special shout out to my patreon supporters thank you guys so much that little bit of a contribution every month whether it's a dollar five dollars whatever you're giving thank you so much you make it possible for me to do this along with personal readings and of course letting the video play until the end <laughs> These are all things that help a YouTuber. So anyway, let's get on to the cards here and let's see what we have going on for October 7th, the week of. So we're looking at the throat chakra, okay? Expression, Um, metabolism, interesting. So this might be a week of health things in the media, certainly could be, around here. So if I were to give any examples, it's me as a human jumping to conclusions, but um, just keep that in mind as I give these to you. But it may, I don't know why Chernobyl like popped in my head. It doesn't mean there's going to be a disaster, but it's that kind of thing. Like it's making me think of like radiation and uh, the thyroid and malfunctioning. So something that, okay. I don't feel like it's like something severe. It's something that we already know about, but it's a toxicity. It's sort of permeating the air, affecting the thyroid. Um, and that's, that's one layer of something that was coming up. So I'll offer that for people as individuals, this could be treating something around the throat or the neck. It could definitely be the neck or the jaw. It could go up into the jaw. I don't know. It came up. So, (laughs) so take care of yourselves. We are entering flu season. So maybe it's like sore throat or something like that. But this also has to do with speaking your truth. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be right about things, but it could also be, it feels more like it is speaking the truth to yourself. Okay. Anything else on that? Uh, (laughs) I felt my head going back and I kind of lost my breath there for a second. Okay, so this is, 
I'm not going to edit this out. I'm just going to, you got to hang with me for the long shot here. I know this isn't interesting <laughs> maybe to watch, but let me get more on why my head's going back. Mm. That feels, okay, hopefully it's metaphorical, but it feels like something happening so suddenly, like you're being tossed forward. This doesn't have to necessarily be in a physical sense. This could be like breakneck speed, so to speak, right? <laughs> so things happening at a very quick pace. What it more feels like is like you don't have a chance to respond to something and then it's happening. You're like, ah, you know, and then you're running off <laughs> trying to catch up or trying to remedy something. There's something around children. It's not a bad thing, but there's something around children. There's a call to action with the kids. There's a call to action. I'm seeing little kids. I'm talking like nine years, eight years, even younger. And uh, they're being, weirdly, they're being the voice of reason. They're telling us how it is. And not like a spoiled brat kind of way, but like, <laughs> but in a way of like, hey, adults, you, you want to get with it here? So this isn't necessarily, I know we have these like labels and everything. And we're like, oh, that's the indigo generation. The indigos are like only slightly younger than me at this point. So um, this is a different generation. It's a generation that came in behind them. So what, why are you guys bringing that up? <laughs> so be prepared for that, especially if you are a parent. So this is a call to parents to not, um, don't diminish your child's light, okay? We don't, my generation uh, and slightly older, when the indigo generation was being born in. And if you uh, fancy yourself an indigo, I would love to hear your perspective on this. So please make sure you comment down below. Um, there was this not knowing what to do with indigos for good or for bad, <laughs> right? So either there was this overcorrection of like sort of babying the indigos or, you know, just completely rejecting them. And uh, I'm hearing like shunned, being shunned um, and pushed out. We are not going to be able to do that with this generation that started coming in about 2015, okay? Yes, I said eight or nine-year-olds will be speaking up, but there's maybe a separate message about some generation coming in in 2015 and forward. So that would be the four-year-olds, <laughs> all right? So something and some combination, hopefully that will make sense next week. If it does, I don't know what to tell you. I do my best here, right? <laughs> I ate my vegetables today, so I can be nice and like, a nice open channel, um, <laughs> but I, cause I'm not making the correlation between the two, but I think it has to do with messaging, bringing the messaging forward. And in contrast to how indigos were, I hate to use the word handled, that's terrible, but uh, were treated, whether they were put on a, a high horse or on a pedestal or they were knocked down, this generation is going and going, it's so obvious, this is what you gotta do what you're going to do with it, right? <laughs> so pay attention to your kids, um, but don't, don't make the mistakes that maybe some indigos may feel. I can't speak for the indigo generation, but, you know, let's not do to this generation what we did to the indigos. Does that make sense? Okay. So anything else on that? I'm sorry if this is boring to you. I respect you if you want to click off. I prefer you didn't. <laughs> Please watch the end, but we've got more coming through, so I'm going to sit with it. So I'm seeing a moon, and it's it's going back and forth between like a quarter moon. It's you know like the cute quarter moon we always we always see with like the little face on it, <laughs> which actually doesn't make me think of a moon phase. It th makes me think of like a lullaby. That's what it makes me think of. radical changes okay so there's something about children how we see them how we treat them what they're doing they're bringing wisdom they're really okay i heard the next deliverance so are you guys telling us this is the next wave and they bring the cosmic energy they bring Yeah, they're, 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 okay, so these kids, whatever generation you want to call them, they aren't, they're not as, as deep in their non-remembrance as maybe previous 
generations were. So they are not going to understand why we do the things that we do. They, in a way, are sort of parenting the parents. They're parenting <laughs> the adults. And this comes not in a control way, but this is more of a, why do you do it like that? Well, why are you mean? Like, why are you, you know, whatever. I'll give you a cute little example. My nephew, Zayden, I bought these little pencil cases for him. He started preschool this year. And I, I saw some cute ones. So I picked up an extra one just in case. And I was saying, you know, we could put this aside for next year, whatever. And my little nephew said, no, I'll give it to someone. And he started thinking of the people he might gift this extra pencil bag to. He's of that generation. He was born in 2015. So that's what we're talking about here. His mind went immediately to, well, I should share it with somebody. I should give this to someone because I don't need all that, right? So that's, that's kind of what we're talking about here, if that makes sense. Anything else on that? <sighs> okay, hang with me, guys. Okay, so here in Colorado, we do have, I think it's the Decker fire, it's happening. If you're in that area, my love to you, praying for you. It's out by Salida, I believe. And that popped into my mind because I'm not, I'm not that close to it, but um, it's relatable. So they, they sometimes do that when I'm getting a message through. They'll give me something that I can relate to and then it starts to broaden and it makes sense and I know how to explain it. So yes, fire is a thing. Be extra, extra diligent about blowing out candles. I'm not kidding. You guys, if you've ever gotten a personal reading with me, you will know that I always say, light a candle only if you can do so safely. <laughs> I will say it all the time. Be careful, especially our crowd here, be careful with the incense, be careful with candles, be careful with anything that you might be burning, sage, you know, that sort of thing. Be careful with ceremonies out in the woods. Okay, I, that's very specific, but there you go. Don't be taking your, I know, like people are gonna be like, are you kidding me, Michelle, this is what we do. Um, be careful if you're gonna take anything out, uh, out into the woods to do a ceremony. I see a circle of people, they're probably doing some, because I did see a moon, um, and I said I saw the, the crescent moon, and then I saw also a full moon. So that could indicate around a time of a full moon, um, things coming to light, things being shed, but then now I'm seeing this thing, it's like be careful of fire, be careful of the dangers around fire, and it getting sparked in a way where someone's just careless about campfires, careless about rituals that they're doing out and about, right? So anything else? <laughs> There's world happenings. Every time I stop and I tune in, I just saw like something like clouds uh, circling around that could, boy, I think we're technically out of hurricane season, right? Um, but I saw a swirl of clouds, disruption, it's just earth disruption. So that could be anything. And we're talking fire, so that could be volcanoes, it could be all kinds of stuff. So the idea here is that we need to pay attention to the signs and the rumblings that the earth is showing us, okay? So take that in for you as an individual. I know this is a very long channeled message. Cards, <laughs> let's get to it. All right, oh. Gratitude. Here we go, guys. There is that. This card definitely talks about the obvious, right? Let me let me focus back in. Hi. <laughs> um, the gratitude card it, that kind of came up in the auto right too, where it was like talking about this sense of entitlement, and we we're talking about generations and maybe their sense of entitlement. <sighs> this week. And for some of the, when we're talking about earth changes, obviously that's not just contained in that one week, but there needs to be more of an opening and an understanding about what truly is important. We talk about that all the time. I know that's kind of like, oh, Michelle, tell us something new. <laughs> but guess what? Um, we need to practice more gratitude here. And I have gratitude that I have cards, but not gratitude that there's like three lights in my face with the glare off this card. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Um, so we need to practice gratitude this week. So if you start to feel like 
oh my gosh, we got all this news about something, you know, that could be toxic in the air. Oh my gosh, there are wildfires or oh my gosh, there's a random hurricane still happening. Whatever the case may be, the children hold the wisdom and we need to have gratitude for them instead of shutting them down. Okay. Um, but we got to get out of our egos. Those egos are really, really making trouble for us. <laughs> right? And we're getting into a time, especially as we hit 2020, guys. Okay. We've been talking about this for a while. We hit 2020 to 2024. There's, there's going to be like, it's going to, it's going to hurry up. Right. And it's going to start happening. So get on that spiritual growth train, get into your gratitude, start practicing forgiveness, um, get out of this thing of comparing yourself to other people, all that. Okay. So here we go. Let me get settled here so I can get that right up to you. Miracles. So what this is talking about is getting in touch with our true nature. And instead of doing the competition, instead of like, you know, praying and praying and praying so hard and kind of putting demands on God in the universe, right? <laughs> Rather, you're getting into your heart space and allowing some of the good stuff, some of the blessings to come to you, right? As opposed to pushing on it. But I, I, again, with all that stuff that they've been giving us, it, it's really going to put things into perspective for us this week. Okay. And again, we have the Gabriel deck to get through as well. I want one more card from this deck. We'll get on to the next. Here it is sticking out. The lovers. Okay, so this is a good one. Let's talk about this. So the ego will immediately go, oh my gosh, that person I have a crush on is going to love me. Or, oh, I just knew that my husband, wife was my soulmate and all this stuff. Listen, this is about, <laughs> this is about two souls coming together for a purpose. So yes, it probably will indicate, let me <laughs> get this open. Um, it's something romantic or at a minimum, it's something heart opening. It's something that's very based in love. So even if it doesn't make sense on the surface, even if you seem like an odd couple or, <laughs> you know, you're like, how in the heck did we ever come together? There's something deep and profound and very soul level that is occurring between the two of you. So keep that in mind. So don't, please don't just cheapen it. I, I said it, what? Um, don't cheapen it by making... <laughs> She's bringing the sass today. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> what I'm getting at here is a lot of people, they, they just want to go to, I want a partner to feel validation. Watch the comments down below. I always get the nasty comments when I don't uh, just give the overly romanticized uh, interpretation of that, right? People want to hear someone's going to love me. Someone, everyone loves you. Of course, I love you. You know, God, source, creator, whatever the heck you want to call it, loves you. You're good, all right? You don't need to go chasing after someone who doesn't treat you right. <laughs> if you need more information on that, let me know down below. Michelle can do a whole love rant video, except rant will be positive. It's not going to be in a negative kind of way. So the lovers means um, a soul contract of two people coming together. And yes, it could have a romantic spin on it, but it's not going to make sense. It's gonna, it has that feel of like, really, you? <laughs> <laughs> so this could be some of you falling in love with, uh, I feel like a coworker for some of you out there, a coworker who has always gotten on your nerves, <laughs> like that kind of thing. It's going to be cute. If that happens, let us know if you don't mind. All right. So let's get some more cards here for you. Daily practice. Yes. So we have gratitude. Uh, we had miracles. So this isn't, as I said, it's not about pushing to bring the miracle in. It's about being a part of yourself. Hi, getting back to you, being in that flow and letting the stuff happen. So that happens, letting that stuff happen, letting good things come to you. Okay. And that is part of your daily practice. And it says, the more you practice your new skills, the more comfortable and confident you become. Now, if that means something to you, by all means, run with it. But this, to me, has more to do with your daily spiritual practice. Okay, and yeah, you could do something creative every day that does spark the creative life force. So there's that. Time management. <laughs> That's hilarious because I was like, who's got time for everything? So, so we have this daily practice card and it's like time management. Oh, y'all got called out. So you saw this, what is it? Yeah, daily practice. So you saw this card, you're like, who has time? And they're like, you better make time. <laughs> you better. There it is. I'll read it here in just a moment after you get a quick glimpse of it. Um, it says, place your priorities at the top of your to-do list and don't allow distractions to deter your focus. 
So you have to make your soul a priority. You have to make yourself a priority. If that means you get up one day and you're like, you know what, I hate to say this, but if your boss is cool with it, and maybe you can show up to work 10 minutes late or so without getting fired, then maybe you get a 10 minute walk in or you know, you do 10 minutes of meditation or even five minutes of meditation, you're only five minutes late. You know what I mean? Or better yet, get up earlier. <laughs> right? Don't don't make your boss mad at all. Um, but that is what we're talking about here about manage your time, make yourself and your soul a priority, not above other people. Not like we got to watch this judgment thing. I hear it all the time. There was a time in my business where I almost didn't want to check my like Facebook messages Oh, or Instagram, Instagram, people really flooded to Instagram to try to get free readings out of me. Guys, this is how I pay my bills. Okay. And don't think that it's lucrative. <laughs> this is a love project for sure. Um, you know, and, and I was almost not wanting to look at it because people were like, oh, I'm in this place in my life because of this person or because of this situation or because I experienced this. And feel sorry for me, they would come and play victim, feel sorry for me and give me a reading, right? Remember that throat chakra thing we were talking about? That's you standing your ground. That's you recognizing truth, okay? So whether you have to speak up about it or not, just ha having that activated, having an understanding where people are trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to play victim with you or are you trying to play victim? Are you manipulating others, right? This is kind of what the auto right was talking about as well. On a broad scale, we need to turn it around. All right, Scarlet, attract success. The number is seven. There is that. Did we have this before? Did we have this last week? I don't remember, but anyway, there's that. So we, again, we're, we're saying this message one more time. It's just kind of recapping. Redefine what you think of as success. All right, get your priorities in order. The priority is your soul. The priority is your spiritual practice, okay? Starting your day with that. That's how you're gonna live your highest potential, all right? It's not gonna be about when I get that promotion or when I get that love partner. If your minds went to it, be uh, I can't say it, I'm not even gonna go into it. Anyway, just be careful with the lover's card, is it, okay? Um, and I, I don't know, we could go on and on. They're really flooding through these messages here, your highest potential is not in this space crammed over here, the ego consciousness. It's not, um, I need to look right to people. I need to look like a rebel. I need to look like I'm the disruptor or I need to make sure that people pay for what they did or I have to make sure I hang on to stuff. Listen, letting go of the past is one of the fastest ways forward. If your past is dictating your present and therefore still um, keeping you in that mindset, keeping you in that, that brain flow. This is what someone said to me one time and I, I've never let it go and I'm just so affected by it, right? We got to let that go because there's so many other things that are going on here that it doesn't necessarily have to be bad. Some of it is what we're already prepared for, what we already know is happening, right? <laughs> and so um, getting our priorities straight has to do with letting go. It really is a week of letting go. So some of you, it's not like give up on your dreams. It's not like, oh, love is never gonna happen for you. Oh, that promotion is never gonna happen for you. It's more of a, yeah, 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 that's nice if it happens, but I'm gonna make sure that I'm in my heart center. Um, when I see something is occurring, I'm ready for it. I'm not in the completely fried, stressed, stressed out state where I can't function anymore because some of us are short circuiting, right? Um, we are seeing a lot of anxiety. We are seeing a, a lot of people with their psychological issues starting to come out. And it's because we hang, they're even saying right now, it's because humans hang on so tightly to what they think they know. And they hang on so tightly to the past that that is still informing every choice that they make now. And it's time for us to let that go, okay? All right, are we done? <laughs> it's a long video. All right, well, we're gonna leave it there, guys. I am sending you so much love as always, and take care.